Welcome to our video tutorial on forms in HTML. We have used forms in many areas such as filling up application forms, etc. So starting off, what is a form? A form is simply an area that contains form fields. A form field is an object which the user can add information to, whether it be a text area, a radio button or a drop down menu. Any web form is essentially works the same way. First, the user fills in some information and submits a button. The form is essential if you want to know anything about your user. Some of the areas in our modern usage where forms are used are used in to send your mail, store information about them in your database and so forth. So, how does an HTML form work? A web form consists of two parts, the HTML front end and a back end form processor that processes your form. The HTML front end part handles the presentation while the back end handles the form submissions. The back end of the form is usually written in languages like PHP or ASP. Working of form. A user visits your web page which contains a form. The user then uses the web browser to display the HTML form. The user fills out the form and clicks submit. The browser then sends the submitted form data to the web server for processing. A form processor script, also known as a form mail, running on the web server processes the form data. A response page is sent back to the browser. So the tags used to create forms. The main tag which is used to create a form is the form tag. The form tag is used along with other tags like input, text area, button, select, option, opt group, field set, label and many more. These tags can contain, uh, they can help the form contain text fields, check boxes, radio buttons and many more kinds of data that can be specified by the user. So how to make a form? To begin with, a form tag contains the met variables method and action. We say method is equal to get to specify that the data which has been entered by the user will be sent to the particular URL which is specified in the action. The next is the input tag. This is used to specify the various types of data which is being entered by the user. Say suppose you want to create a text box. The type will be specified as text and the name variable will specify the name of your box. The text area is used to create multiple lines of text. So in this case, we will specify the row size and the column size. Notice that the text area tag requires a closing tag too. Next is the radio buttons. The radio buttons are used to specify various options in this format. So we have the type as radio and the name will be specifying the name of the buttons. Next is once the user has finished uh, entering his or her details, he has to submit it or reset the values. So we create tags or uh, say buttons that uh, helps the user to either submit their values or reset their values. And the form is finished by adding the closing form tag that is slash form. Now let's see on how to make a form. So open your notepad and then first we start with the HTML tag followed by the slash HTML. In between, we have the body tag and slash body. In between the body tag is where we create the form tag. So form method equal to get and action equal to register.php. So this says that the data which is being entered by the user 
will be sent to register.php. So next we end it by using the slash form. So in between this, we create the various kinds of input uh, that can be got from the user. So first is the name. Suppose I want to get the user's name. Then name and then I use the input tag. Type is equal to text and the name is name. Then this is followed by the break tag. Next, I'm going to get the age. So I give input type equal to text and the name is equal to age. So this is followed by the break. Now I want to get the password. So the password must be in the password format that is it must not be visible to anybody. So type is password and the name is pass1. This is followed by the bit. Now uh, the user has also uh, to confirm the user has to confirm the password too. So we give the confirm password. It's also in the uh, password type that is it should not be visible. So the type is password and the name is password. This is followed by that. Now get the gender. Uh, this is of a radio type, so the type is equal to radio and the name is equal to gender. Now I specify male, that's my first option. And then the next option is specify by another input tag, radio. And the name is equal to gender. Notice that we have to give the same name for both. Email is second option. I give the date. Now, uh, city is to be selected uh, by the user. So I'm going to give a list of cities. A list of cities from which. Uh, the user can select any one. Uh, so I use the select tag and then the options are given by the option tag. My first option is Chennai slash option. Then the second option is Bombay again slash option. And then my third option is Bangalore and then slash option and slash select. Now let's see if this works with what we created. So I save it as any file name dot html and then type must be all files save it. Now in order to run it right click open with Google Chrome. So yes it's created now. I can enter any values. The age is 34. Okay. I'm going to give my password. I can select as male or female. And then the drop down list from which I can select whatever city I want. Now let's modify our program. So now let's modify our program.
I'm going to add a text area. So in the text area means that the user can enter multiple lines of text. So in this, I need to specify the row size and the column size. Over here, I specify the row size as 4 and the column size also as 4. You can specify any value you want. And this is followed by the slash text area. Now, I need to get the info from the user as to whether he or she wants to submit the data or he or she wants to reset it. So, I create two buttons as register and clear. This is created by using the input tag. So input type equal to submit and value is equal to register. The next one is input type equal to reset and value equal to clear. So over here, I'm creating two buttons, register and clear. If the user clicks register, the data will be submitted or else if he clicks clear, then it will be reset. So let's um, save this and refresh. Now my text area and register and clear are created. Now let me enter some values. Now if I click clear, the data is reset, whereas if I click register, the data will be sent. As, I ha uh, as since I have been connected to register.php, it says that the file was not found. And also notice that um, all the data that I have entered is getting appended with the URL. So this is because I have used here the method as get. Let me try using post. Now if I use post and then let me refresh and then let me enter the data and then when I click register, see that the data is not getting appended. So that is the difference between get and post. So in get, the form data will be appended in the URL, whereas in post, the form data will not be appended in the URL. So this makes uh, the data which is entered vulnerable to hacking in get, whereas in post, it is not the case. Now in get, the form data is limited to 1024 bytes, whereas in post, the form data is unlimited. So there you go. Try making your own form. So now since we have seen how to create HTML form, let us look at its advantages. Forms are used for gathering data online. Web forms offer convenience and speed for both the user and the form owner. So some of its advantages are, first, speed. Compared with paper forms, web forms once built are faster to distribute and you don't have to wait to get a batch printed. Instead of sending out forms to a list of addresses or handing them out to a room full of students, you can simply ask respondents to visit the form URL. Next, data sorting. Web forms make data easier to sort Responses are gathered digitally, so you don't have to transcribe handwritten notes into the computer. Convenience and cost. The fact that a web form can be submitted instantly means less time waiting for feedback. Some of the limitations of HTML forms are The most commonly cited problem with HTML forms is their dependency on scripting languages. A second limitation of HTML forms is the difficulty of initializing form data. Example, as commonly happens when websites remember past users and provide them the courtesy 
of not having to repeatedly enter information. The third limitation of HTML form is that the encoding formats, URL encoded or multipart, represent only flat data or name value pairs. In order to overcome limitations, X forms are used. So, an X form should use XML both for initial data and submitted data. The difference between a blank form and a filled out form should be minimal and representable as an XML document. Forms should be easy to route to multiple users and locations rather than a specific site. X forms should separate purpose, presentation, and form data. X forms should provide the 20% of functionality needed to avoid 80% of all form scripting, which is one of its limitations. Popular features such as calculations and validations should be included in the language for efficiency. So now that you have watched our video, we hope that it has been useful. Thank you for watching.